Bull Armory Ultralight. Let's check it out. Bull Armory was founded in 1995. Uh, it's a family-owned business in Israel that makes really high-quality 1911s. Uh, in 2016, they brought out the SAS model, uh, and that means a polymer grip shell that's double-stacked with a metal receiver and a steel slide. There's a number of different pistols that they make in this configuration. Many consider it what STI started as the 2011 and that is that polymer frame. It's not just that it's a double stack because there's a lot of double stack 1911s out there, but with this polymer frame that you can change out, uh, and it really makes the gun very light and very popular on the competitive circuits. Uh, they make a whole host of different models. This is their smallest, and it is the SAS-2 Ultralight. It has a 3.25 inch barrel, and it is extremely lightweight. It's based on the 1911 design, so it is single action and it is optics ready. Now this is one of the new ultralights with the bobbed hammer, the bobbed beaver tail, just to make it a little more concealed carry friendly. And it does carry 16 plus one, which is upgraded from the 15 plus one that these originally had. I have been wanting a 2011 style pistol uh, for a good while. I love 1911s, but you know, they're just limited to round capacity of in nine millimeter, nine rounds, which this is a nine millimeter pistol, up to 16 rounds. And this really gives you a lot of capacity. And it's so lightweight, it makes it so easy to carry. And we really appreciate Bull Armory for sending the SAS-2 Ultralight for this review. The Bull SAS-2 Ultralight 3.25 inch barrel. This is a similar to the 2011 style frame uh, with a polymer, but we're getting a really short slide. And then you have an aluminum lower uh, that's joined in with the polymer, and then we have an all steel stainless slide. Stainless 3.25 inch barrel. Of course, your STIs and now your staccatos are in that same ballpark. And this also comes in a black frame system and then a two-tone with the stainless color on the slide. Let's go ahead and make sure that the gun is unloaded. We're going to drop our 16 plus one magazine and the chamber is empty. Now Bull has introduced their SAS-2 Ultralight uh, a while back and there have been some changes. Uh, one of the big changes is that it has ambidextrous safeties. Another big change. We're going to pop it back is this little bobbed hammer. <laughs> they had the commander hammer at first, but this is just more carry friendly. Uh, you don't have that little hammer coming out. Plus, they bobbed the beaver tail. Now, it still gives you a good high ride, and it's going to protect your hand, obviously from hammer bite, but also from slide bite. And I'll tell you, these panels on this polymer grip, the diamond panels, are just really grippable and very unaggressive as far as texturing and really being rough on your hands. It's a very flat kind of pyramid shape and yet it goes all the way around even to the small mainspring housing. Then of course at the front elongated lines uh, and then you have this nice little bump at the bottom which kind of simulates a magwell. In fact this does have RMR cuts and it's designed with the shield RMS footprint. So with that and that little area right here that comes down. It's called the pinky press. And if you 
just tighten up your pinky you, it'll help to align your red dot sight but to be honest it'll align your standard iron sights the magwell as we drop it uh, it has some beveling right here on the side but one of the big things about these type magazines as you can see they're narrow at the front that's really the magwell i mean it just pops it right in and it doesn't matter really how you insert the magazine i mean they just find their way home but speaking of magazines, it has been up to 16 rounds from the original 15 round. And man, they are highly polished blue, very nice magazines, nice base plate. And it does give you a little bit of a lip to be able to grab that if you need to get a malfunction out of the way. The mag release is kind of plain. Honestly, it's just a little different. Now, some of their race models, they're more serrated and they're larger, but this is really for concealed carry. It's not to snag. Uh, and it's extended just a little bit so it makes it really easy to pop those magazines out that little bobbed hammer i mean that thing is just very minimal now one of the things about this trigger is that it has the modular trigger system and it has the short curve trigger shoe so it's pretty much of a straight pullback with just a little bit of a curve and there are serrations right on the trigger and you have a small adjustment hole here to be able to set your over travel really nice deep front cocking serrations and rear cocking serrations allowed to get that really easily press checks real easy as well now here on the top of the slide we just have some small cuts and then we have this deep cut here and then it extends all the way out and again this site can be removed and you can put on one of your shield footprint sites but the barrel fluted it is beautiful uh, and we'll look at it when we break it down but you can see the fluting and then it almost looks like the bolt of an AR-15 right here, which it gives it a very unique look. And we have a full length guide rod. It's kind of a different system than the other bulls. And we'll look at that better when we break it down. Uh, also right here, of course, made in Israel with serial number and we have Picatinny slots. The rear sight is blacked out and serrated and it is adjustable. The front sight is a fiber optic and it is dovetailed in and man does it show up well at the range. The trigger guard has some serrations here on the front and it has an undercut here and it's undercut at the bottom so it really allows your hand to get really high up on the pistol. And once you have that beaver tail, I mean it's a very natural fit and even though these are larger magazines, uh, man... Uh, the grip is really nice. I mean, it is not too thick. And that's one of the things sometimes about larger pistols. Your standard 1911 is really thin, very pointable. But I really like this grip. It gives you a full hold on this pistol. And to be honest with you, one thing about some bigger grips, especially if you have small to medium hands, which I have medium hands, is I bring this in, I can get a full pad on the trigger with no problem. And that is important because if you have to stretch to get your trigger, you're going to stretch your hand around and sometimes you can get your knuckle placed in a, a not so good position. You want a full grip right there in the web of your hand. And so this gives you that really nice full pad on the trigger. Let's go ahead and check the trigger action. Right here you have a little bit of take up. <laughs> and then it's just a break. Now, 1911s are known for having really good triggers, but this one, I don't know, this one kind of takes the cake. Bring it out. I mean, the reset is super fast. Let's check the trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells. Two pounds, 6.9 ounces. Two pounds, 10 ounces. Guys, it is light, it is crisp, and it is definite. It's tactile. I've never felt a trigger like that. I mean, I've done a lot of work with 1911s, and I've just never felt a trigger like that. Now, that would be too light of a trigger on a striker fire pistol. But one of the great things is you do have, number one, your grip safety, but you also have your standard frame safety. And so you got your frame safety, you can't pull it. You hit that, you still can't pull it until you engage that beaver tail or the grip safety. The grip safety was a requirement with the U.S. military when the 1911 was first introduced. So this is just part of the 1911. And guys, I'll tell you, uh, with that memory notch, I mean, you can just depress it. It's a passive safety, but it gives you extra safety. And I like that, being passive. So the only thing I have to think about, if I'm carrying 1911s, 
uh, but I'm typically carrying striker fire pistols and there's no frame safety. That's one of the things you need to get used to is disengaging that safety. Uh, but it is kind of here and I mean, you pull it out, the safety's there. And one thing I really like about having this kind of safety is that I can take my thumb, place it over it, and it allows me to be able to have a little more recoil management, which you know I'm big about. I like flat shooting guns. And with this nine millimeter, it is flat shooting anyway even though this is a really lightweight 1911. And this polymer frame just really makes this even lighter. The fluting on the barrel makes it lighter. The cuts, the deep cuts on the side and these cuts at the top. I mean, there is a lot of room that's been removed right up here. That's just gonna make this slide very lightweight. And because of that, you've got less mass coming back. And one thing about this pistol is it is a single action pistol. And that means that the hammer is not actuated with a trigger. Uh, it has to be cocked. And again, you've got your safety, you've got your safety, and then you fire. Uh, it is a very safe pistol to carry, even at two and a half pound trigger pull. Now one pistol that compares the most to this that I have is the Alpha Foxtrot 1911 S15. Uh, we just did a review on this one. It actually uses Glock mags or the Shield Arms S15 mags. So you have a 15 round mag capacity, uh, but it has an all aluminum frame. Uh, one of the things too about the Alpha is that it's thin. I mean, in fact, it's thinner in the grip than your standard 1911 because everything is incorporated into the frame itself. Uh, there's no grip panels. This is really a beautiful gun with the diamond like carbon coating on it, a uh, real high ride beaver tail. But you can see the differences between the two uh, with the bobbed hammer uh, and that little bobbed beaver tail and some other features. And this is a lot lighter, even though this is aluminum and it's a fairly light gun. Uh, two, a little bit shorter barrel and slide. But uh, this is a really beautiful gun, and uh, I'll have the review annotated right here. Of course, going to the other end of the spectrum, we have the new Springfield Armory Prodigy. I just reviewed this gun. It's just been released. Uh, this is a very large 2011 style pistol. In fact, they call it the 1911 DS for double stacked. Uh, it does have that polymer grip shell and um, 17 round magazines. Also comes with a 20 round magazine uh, and it has a 26 round magazine. Uh, and so this is a very large and in charge pistol. Uh, in fact, it has a long accessory rail. I mean, it's the full length uh, barrel. And I'll tell you, this is a beautiful gun. Uh, very large and very good for competitive shooters, but really good for home defense. Not so much on the concealed carry side. And so you have just a whole array of different styles that you can get with this type polymer frame, aluminum frame, which this one is all steel frame. And the weight on the SAS2 Ultralight one pound, 8.8 .8 ounces. We really appreciate the Oki for sponsoring the ammo. All made in the USA. One of the biggest suppliers of ammunition in the country. Also, our Lula loaders, especially loading these 15 round magazines, just makes it really easy. And that's 16. I really thought that it was going to be like snappy, real snappy. Uh -uh. It's not at all. No. Even that shorter barrel. Well, it's because they've got the right recoil spring in the gun. They've got a really light recoil spring in it for nine millimeter. You don't need a super heavy spring in it. And you know, you got a light slide, light recoil spring, light shooting nine millimeter round. I like it. I knew I was going to like it, but I like it a lot more than I thought I was going to. <laughs> I love that little gun. It is so awesome.
You know, this thing, it's so lightweight that you would expect it to have a lot more recoil uh, with that shorter barrel. I, I guess because of that full grip too, it gives you that, it gives you a little extra gripping. Mm -hmm. There is a little bit of where the uh, Picatinny rail comes down. You can actually rest your thumb on that as a ledge to mitigate recoil. And the fiber optic sight, I mean, it really glows. You know, I, I was really looking forward to this gun, checking it out, but I am honestly a lot more impressed than I thought I would be for such a small little gun. This to me would make an excellent concealed carry piece. It's, it's 1911 style, but yet it's really uh, the 2011, a lot of those 2011 features. I'm just, um, <clears throat> this is a very unique gun. I'm very impressed with it. So our rubber dummy for today is Stalin, and we're going to give him a good capitalist salute. I think Stalin's going to be a little hard of hearing from now on out, thanks to the Bull Armory SAS-2. We have some Federal SHT self-defense loads. They're 124 grain, and that's what Bull Armory recommends. So we're going to run some through it and see how she functions. Now for disassembly, drop your magazine, go ahead and check your chamber. Uh, this 1911, honestly, it's really easy to disassemble, uh, but there are a couple of tricks. Uh, you want to take that little crescent in your slide and you want to bring it back right here to your slide stop, just like this, and line that up. Here on the other side, just push through this pin, and because it's so recessed and because of this little lip right here, uh, a punch really helps. Then you just bring your slide right off. Now a lot of times you have to mess with your mainspring and of course with the barrel bushing system and all that. But this is a full length guide rod and it is dual springed. And uh, we're going to go ahead and just take it out. You want to just depress it but it is under spring tension so just be careful. We pull it out. Now here we have the dual spring and we have a shorter spring that's captive right here. This really aids in recoil. I mean, it makes it really nice. And then here we have a little sleeve that's a bushing um, and very well done. And then we're going to take our barrel link, drop it down, and just bring your barrel right out of the front of the slide. Now, we're talking about a very unique but yet beautiful barrel. I mean, it's just well machined. And, uh, and even around the chamber. I mean, so it really is a short barrel, but it's very well made. Nice, generous feed ramp. And then, of course, this front end. I love it, man. That is just something that really makes this pistol stand out. And, guys, that is all you need to do to field strip. It's really simple. Uh, but one thing about it, this is a grip shell or a grip, and it is polymer. And, of course, you can take out these different pieces and pull it off, but it is not recommended to do. Uh, and you don't need to do that to clean your pistol, just like you don't need to remove your grip panels whenever you're cleaning your 1911. I mean, this is self-contained, and you really don't have to mess with it. And so for reassembly, uh, very simple, just bring in your barrel, make sure your barrel link is down. And then we're going to lift our barrel link back up, take our small little sleeve, lip on the outside, and then we take our recoil spring and guide rod. We're going to push that down, put it into place right here, and then we just bring our barrel link like this because this takedown pin is going to fit right through there. Then we take it and put it right back on our frame. Once you line up where that barrel link is, go ahead and just drop in your pin. You want to make sure that it is lined up just like that. Then what I do is, is I bring back my slide, I'll lift up the takedown pin or the slide stop and then get it really close to this little detent and then push it up just like that and you're done. Now it comes in a cardboard box but there is a case inside that's extremely well done. I think some of the originals came in a hard case. Honestly I'd rather have the soft case especially if I'm going to use it. <laughs> but it has a zipper on the front, has velcro, really nice grab handles uh, that are reinforced. 
and of course the Bull Armory logo. And then you open it up. Now it's kind of unique because you've got all of your information in here. In fact, you can see you have a cleaning rod, cleaning brushes, a small tool for sight adjustment. You have patches, stickers. They, I mean, this is a really nice bag on top of that. And then we have a cover flap and then you open it up and there's a Velcro field and then you have your pistol. Now we have some tie downs, which I love. Uh, keep this really stable. And then right here in the top, you have a magazine holder. And I just have the extra magazine here. This gives you a lot of options, six extra magazines. I mean, this is a great way to carry this firearm to the range. And um, I really like this case. MSRP on the Bull Armory SAS-2 Ultralight is $1,480. Compare this with the Staccato, this Optics Ready, their compact version, which is still not as small as the Bull Armory SAS Ultralight. And it's $2,299. Uh, so it's a very comparable pistol for a lot less money. Am I saying that the Staccato is not worth the money? Man, the Staccatos have really been popular. A lot of people are buying them. But if you want to get into that type pistol for a much lower price, this Bull Armory Ultralight is absolutely phenomenal. I'll just be honest with you. I don't really know of anything that I could say is a con. It is a 1911, and if that's not your style, then, you know, that's definitely a preference. But uh, the quality and the features that are on this pistol, I mean, there's so many. You know, this is really a great pistol for the money. Is it worth $1,480? Man, that's up for, to you to decide. You can buy three Glocks with that if that's what you want, uh, which I'm a big Glock fan. But I'll tell you, the way this thing shoots, uh, man, it's really hard to put down. Hey guys, if you're hesitant about buying a gun out of the country uh, and worried about repair support, one great thing about Bull Armory is they have a facility down in Miami, Florida, which they import into and then they distribute out to different gun companies. Uh, one of the things that really helps the price with these pistols is that they sell directly to retail outlets. And so while the price is $1480, that is the price that you're typically going to pay. But that's a lot cheaper than any of the other options out there and yet the quality is top notch so you don't have to send them all the way back to the holy land <laughs> and to give you a price comparison this commander style bull armory 1911 retails for 850 dollars which is very much in line with all your 1911s that are out there that aren't just super high custom and yet this has a lot of great features for that price this is a great pistol it's not that these are just high priced it's just a lot more that goes into making it. And that's one of the reasons why this is so much cheaper than your Staccato. Now we really appreciate Bull Armory for sending the SAS-2 Ultralight for this review. And guys, if you've been looking at the Staccato, because it's an excellent pistol, uh, this is right there on par and it's a heck of a lot cheaper. Rubber Dummies is one of the best training tools on the market. And you get a 10% discount using Suit00 when you click the link down in the description. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America, long live the Republic. Go ahead. Oh, I will put it on video. <laughs> My daughter, the Belcher, <laughs> just like her mama. Yeah. Very well designed. It's extremely. I thought that it was going to be a little bit, you know, grip. Okay. Which STI started as the 2011. Okay. Again, I'll have it reviewed. Okay. I'll have it reviewed. I'm gonna have it reviewed. Uh, 
just pulled the trigger before I meant to, and then I just threw my threw my mojo off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs>